Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Edelman. Thanks for joining us uh, at this very uh, special webinar. Very happy to bring on two guests today. Uh, Matt Hogan, who is the Chief Investment Officer of Bitwise Asset Management. Hi, Matt. You're on mute still, just like hey, I was. Hey, Rick. Good to see you. you. Good to see you too, Matt. And Chris King, who is the CEO of Eagle Brook uh, Advisors. Chris, uh, join us. Rick, how's it going? Thank you for having me. Always a glad, pleasure. Glad to have you, Chris. Uh, this is going to be a really great conversation because there's been a lot of, obviously, curiosity, level of interest in the world of crypto. Uh, advisors struggling still in the absence of a Bitcoin ETF, how can we get engaged with crypto on behalf of our clients? Uh, and there's really a lot of excitement about the fact that there is now uh, a new category of crypto investing called crypto SMAs, separately managed accounts. And we're going to delve into that here in the next hour. But before we do all of that, uh, I want to do two things. First, uh, I'd like to all to get a little more familiar with both Matt uh, and Chris and their companies. Uh, so Matt, why don't you give us a real quick overview of Bitwise? Sure, absolutely. Delighted to be here. Really excited to talk about SMAs, which are one of the most exciting areas with advisors coming into the crypto market. You know, Bitwise is a specialist crypto asset manager. We've been around since 2017, so more than five years in the market. We're one of the largest and most established crypto fund providers in the world, best known for creating the world's first and today running the world's largest crypto index fund, although we have more than 20 funds on the market. I think a few things that make us unique, we're trusted in the space of education. I was fortunate along with one of my colleagues to co-author the CFA Institute's first ever guide to Bitcoin, blockchain, and crypto assets, which is a very well uh, downloaded piece for them. We'd love to do that kind of research. We're also fairly unique in that we're exclusively focused on financial professionals, uh, RIAs, financial advisors, family offices and institutions are all we serve. We are oriented to serve that group. And then finally, we're a large team of 60 people who are exclusively focused on the crypto asset management space. So we've been doing this for a while. We've seen bull and bear markets alike, and we've oriented our company to serve this advisor market. If you wanna to go to that, that next slide, Rick, I'll give one additional important example of what we mean. I believe we're, we're the only or one of the only firms out there that has a dedicated team of uh, crypto experts who are distributed across the country in regions all across the US. And these are the lovely pictures here. Uh, wherever you live, there is a Bitwise representative there who exists solely to serve the needs of advisors. If you have a question from a client about crypto, if there's something you saw in the news that you don't understand, if you wanna know what products are available or how they compare, there's someone in your neighborhood uh, ready to answer your questions. This is, of course, what we see in traditional asset management. It's the service that advisors expect. And we try to deliver that and replicate that in the crypto market. Uh, and as you know, Rick, every person on this slide has been through your certification course. Uh, it's something we do before they step foot in the field as we make sure they're experts by, by working with folks like you to put them through that course. So that's a little bit about Bitwise. Uh, thank you for that, Matt. And by the way, what you see on the screen are a bunch of photos of happy, smiling faces. The names uh, and their where they are in the country and their contact info is in a doc that you will now find in the chat box. So go to your chat at the bottom of your screen or the top of your screen, and you can click that link and it will give you uh, everybody's names and locations and email addresses and phone numbers so you can reach them very easily. That document not only has uh, the contact info of this entire dedicated team of experts from Bitwise. It also has four other documents uh, of describing various funds the Bitwise offers. We'll talk about them as the uh, uh, conversation progresses today. So you definitely want to click on that link uh, right about now. And Chris King, tell us uh, about Eagle Brook Advisors. Yes. So Eagle Brook is a crypto SMA platform that exclusively works with wealth management firms, RIAs, and advisors. We really focus on providing the technology and the best in class experience for any RA advisor to allocate to this asset, asset class uh, with the SMA structure. We worked with, uh, we currently work with over 60 
RIA firm, 650 advisors that collectively manage now uh, over 200 billion in assets. Uh, we've uh, at Eagle Brook raised over $125 million into the SMA structures and work with some of the largest RAs in the country, Marina Wealth Advisors, Dynasty Financial Partners. Um, and we're really excited to be partner with both Bitwise and uh, DAC of P and Rick Edelman. We really want to work with the best in class asset managers that have a fantastic reputation and asset management capabilities and education working with the RAs and advisors on our platform. So we're really excited about this, this webinar to uh, tell you more about uh, what we're bringing to the market. And now you know why I asked Matt and Chris to join me on this conversation, because these are two of the leaders, not only in the crypto space, but very specifically the crypto SMA space. So in our effort to teach you about crypto SMAs, who better than these two guys to, to talk about that? But before we launch into the questions that I've assembled for both of you, I want to level set uh, with who's watching uh, and participating in this webinar today. So I've got three fast poll questions for us. Uh, and Mary Beth, if you'll bring up the first one, uh, do you currently allocate to crypto in your client accounts? Yes or no? So quickly answer that question. And Mary Beth will post the answers uh, really quickly. So 60-40. Um, Matt, does that surprise you that it's, um, I'm a little surprised it's as high as 40%, quite frankly. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly higher than the national average that we get when we survey the market. I think that's in the in the teens percentage. But of course, you speak to a crypto savvy audience. Right. It also shows that even amongst a crypto savvy audience, there's a lot of room for growth. And as I'm sure we'll discuss, there are reasons to expect that growth to come sooner rather than later with what's going on in the market. And I also think that the fact that even though 40% of the folks watching this are allocating to crypto, they are not engaged in SMAs and they're curious about that, which is why they're here. So, uh, so all good. Mary Beth, the second question for us. What's your time frame for allocating new capital to crypto? You've got five choices there. Pick one, and then Mary Beth will post the results for us. Wow, this is really interesting. Forty uh, percent, Matt, say that they're going to do so within by the end of the year. Um, yeah, that's remarkable. This has changed, is my guess, Rick, within the last month. I think because of the news regarding BlackRock. Because of the news that was regarding BlackRock, of course, crypto had a fantastic start to this year. Right, it was up seventy uh, percent in Q1, but the sentiment around the market really shifted when when BlackRock filed for that ETF, putting their flag in the ground, saying Bitcoin matters. And in my conversations with clients, I'm sure it's the same with Chris, we've been hearing a lot more urgency as well. So those numbers check out to me. Are you getting that kind of uh, sentiment and feedback, Chris, when you talk with advisors? Yes, exact same sentiment where I think uh, earlier this year when there was a lot of regulatory issues, counterparty risk issues, people were saying, hey, let's wait and see. And now, um, since the price has gone up, you know, 80% this year, um, it's kind of staying at, at 30,000, which I think price is actually a big driver of both end investor client demand and advisor demand that is uh, having more people answer the phones and a lot more engaged with, um, you know, the conversations that we're having them around allocating now versus, you know, when we're uh, around the next run up. So, you know, I six years ago, Larry Fink said that. Uh, the only good use of Bitcoin was for illegal activity. And last week on Fox News, he said it's going to revolutionize global finance and that it is uh, digital gold and the way we're going to protect ourselves against inflation and devaluation of currencies. What an amazing change and turnaround, 180 degrees over the last six years. So you're right, that stake in the ground, Matt, is certainly giving people a lot of excitement. Let's go to our third and final question, Mary Beth. What do you think the price of Bitcoin will be by the end of the year? I love this question because none of us know the answer. So what do you think is going to happen? Four choices. Take your pick. And as we all know, for level setting, crypto is right now around 30,000. We'll see what the audience has to say. Uh, uh, 28% think it will be about the same. Half think it's going to rise by a third. Uh, 16% think it's going to almost double by the end of the year. Chris, do you think this is deserved bullishness or people unrealistic? 
I, I think this is realistic. I'm I typically uh, subscribe to like having maximalism and the four year cycle. So I do think that um, with some of the positive headwinds or tailwinds that we could see somewhere around 40 or 50 by the end of this year. Um, but I think we'll probably see all time highs passing, you know, over 60 K probably towards middle to end of 2024. Matt. I'm also optimistic for this year. I don't think it's straight up and to the right. There's still significant risk in the market, but I do think we end the year higher than we are today. Those numbers don't surprise me. They don't scare me. And uh, I think they're realistic. So if you listen to my podcast today, I have a special 40 minute podcast we released this morning talking about crypto. And I said that if the SEC says yes to BlackRock's application, uh, and everybody else's, including Bitwise, is that uh, the price of crypto is going to double within a matter of weeks. Um, so um, we'll stay tuned and see what happens uh, along that score. Okay, with all of that in mind, we have a sense of who's watching this, who's engaging. Uh, Matt, let, let's begin with the most fundamental of questions. Uh, in case there are advisors watching who don't know the answer to the, this most basic question, what is an SMA uh, and why are advisors so interested in them? Yeah, it's one of the fastest growing areas for advisors, not just in crypto, but more broadly. It is, of course, as the acronym suggests, a separately managed account where an individual client will have their own account of assets trying to achieve a specific aim. There are probably in crypto at least three major advantages to an SMA, and Chris can speak to this better than I can. Um, one is practice management related. You know, until we have a spot Bitcoin ETF and even beyond that for other crypto assets, it's difficult for some advisors to fit crypto into their practice. Private funds don't fit cleanly into the practice. Maybe they're not allowed to allocate to OTC trusts, but an SMA fits cleanly into their practice. Chris has built a beautiful system that reports in to their, their fee structure, their reporting structure. It makes it seamless and easy. That's one of the key advantages. A second key advantage is tax related. If you have a client who has money in crypto, they can bring it in kind into an SMA relationship without it being a taxable event. And as you and I have discussed, there is a huge business development opportunity for advisors of bringing external capital into the advised relationship. There are 110 million Coinbase accounts out there. So chances are your clients are doing crypto on your own. You can bring it inside the SMA relationship. And that's a beautiful benefit. And then a third one, some clients just want to hold crypto directly. Obviously, I think fund structures are a beautiful structure with a high quality custodian. It's extraordinarily secure, but some people want to see their own assets and not commingled assets. And uh, for those people, an SMA provides that service. And on top of that, you can have any uh, strategy you want, right? Bitwise is almost wrapper agnostic. We'll do it in funds. We'll do it in SMAs, et cetera. But the SMA is a beautiful solution for many clients and therefore for many advisors. Well, you know, it's interesting because the big dominant conversation these days is the Bitcoin, uh, spot Bitcoin ETF applications from BlackRock, Bitwise, Fidelity, Wisdom Tree, Valkyrie Arc, and so on. And there's this broad-based assumption that if the SEC does say yes about a Bitcoin ETF, that's all anybody's going to want to invest in because ETFs are such a popular investment vehicle. But Matt, you spent your career in the ETF world. Um, you began with Inside ETFs. You, you built a huge career there, the largest uh, crypto uh, investment conference for ETFs in, in history. And you've moved over to the crypto world, um, giving you the, the expertise had in both categories. And although you're a huge fan of ETFs from your background, hmm. let's face it, ETFs, a lot of advisors have discovered, are inferior to SMAs. Talk about why. Yeah, well, I think I think there are probably two reasons, one generic and one specific to crypto. On the generic basis, uh, you can't do tax loss harvesting at the same level within an ETF as you can within an SMA. You don't have as much customization potential. And as a result, we've seen, again, not just in crypto, but broadly, the SMA structure being one of the fastest growing structures amongst the advisor community. Everything you hear about direct indexing, um, all of that is really just SMAs with a different wrapper on top of it. In crypto, there's this other piece, even if we get a spot Bitcoin ETF, which is that Bitcoin is not the only crypto asset. Uh, 
And increasingly, as crypto matures, you're seeing much wider dispersion and slow reductions in correlations between different crypto assets as they settle into different crypto use cases. So even in a post-Bitcoin ETF world, there will be many advisors who are forward thinking on crypto, many of the advisors on this call today, who will want more than Bitcoin in their portfolio because they understand the different use cases. So, And I think that's the thing we have to not forget is that this whole hubbub over these Bitcoin ETF applications are exactly that, a Bitcoin <laughs> application. The SEC, the, no one, I think, to my knowledge, tell me if I'm wrong, has filed for an Ethereum ETF or a Polygon ETF or an Algorand ETF or a Solana ETF. So the Bitcoin ETF only goes so far, but if you want to build a diversified portfolio of crypto, and let's face it, most advisors love the notion of diversification, that Bitcoin ETF doesn't really solve your problem on behalf of your client. Um, so Chris, is that what you're experiencing? I, I mean, you talk to advisors all the time. What are they telling you is the reason they're interested in talking about a, a crypto e uh, SMA? Yeah, I think the direct ownership that spawns a bunch of other uh, advantages is the main reason. I think on a, to practice managers is control of the assets, right? Owning it directly at a qualified custodian where they can have daily liquidity. They can it can be tax optimized, which is a major advantage. Um, it can be um, liquidated, and it can be you can add to your position at any time. Those are the major advantages of having it in the crypto uh, SMA wrapper. Are those that you're talking to predominantly advisors who are already using SMAs and other asset classes, or are they new to the SMA world? Primarily both. Um, I think that they are comfortable and familiar with the SMA wrapper and structure, like you said, direct indexing, owning it um, directly where there's customization. But I think that's unique to crypto is you're not gonna get professional management or a market cap weighted index in the ETF wrapper anytime soon. So even when a Bitcoin ETF is approved, you're still gonna want to own the Bitwise 10 and the majority of advisors are gonna wanna allocate their 5% crypto allocation into the Bitwise 10 and market cap weighted index. And also there's a lot of opportunity to return in a post Bitcoin ETF world where a bunch of capital is flowing into Bitcoin where the other assets in a portfolio, I think can generate a lot stronger returns and outperform. So that's why you're gonna to wanna to own it in the crypto structure to get that multi-asset exposure. Um, I'll also add, as we're having this conversation, if you have questions uh, as we're chatting, uh, Chris and Matt and I, feel free to, to enter those into the Q&A section of uh, the screen, and we'll tackle as many of those as we can during the conversation. Um, Chris, Matt mentioned earlier that one of the cool aspects of a crypto SMA is that you can transfer a client's existing crypto in kind into their SMA account, which avoids the tax implication. Um, talk about logistically at Eagle Brook, how does that work? Just, just in terms of paperwork process and so on. So 20% of our assets are in-kind transfers, which are assets that were held away from the wealth management firm that they now have in their purview, that they can fee on, that they can report on, that they can bill on, which is really important when you're doing uh, holistic financial planning, estate planning, all of those things. Uh, logistically, how it works from an operational perspective is instead of funding the account with the wire, they are actually funding the account by transferring the Bitcoin from, let's say, a self-directed crypto um, uh, exchange like Coinbase or Kraken. And uh, you can onboard uh, Bitcoin, Ether, or really any ERC-20 token that the qualified custodian that the RA selects um, support. So it's very seamless. And what we also find is that a lot of the um, clients that bought, let's say, 100K worth of crypto on a self-directed retail exchange, they wanted to actually be managed by someone. They say, hey, I don't have the experience. I want to work with a professional manager that knows what they're doing, which is why we really decided to partner with Bitwise, because we kept hearing that from our clients in the market. Now, we know that ordinarily when, when, uh, when we as advisors move clients' assets from one place to another, you know, you go from one custodian to another or, or what have you. That process, you know, the ACAT process, that takes days officially and weeks in practicality. How long does it take uh, at Eagle Brook to actually, once a client says we're going to move, or an advisor on behalf of a client says we're going to move money from Kraken or Coinbase or uh, Gemini or wherever um, over to an SMA account at Eagle Brook, how long does it take to get it done? 
So as long as it takes to be confirmed on the network, uh, depending on how the speeds of the Bitcoin network or uh, Ethereum network. So typically it takes under an hour to get all those confirmations and see that. And we can um, we typically get on calls for larger transfers, let's say over 100,000 and walk the client through that process, because sometimes that can be a scary process, moving it from one platform to another. So we facilitate that and make sure that um, there's no... When you say it's scary, that's because of the client's inexperience in doing it. And let's face it, there isn't a do-over button. There's no help button when you're dealing with crypto. Uh, so we want to make sure that they get it right. Um, um, and uh, do you do a test trade before just to make sure that you, know, you, you send a fraction of a Bitcoin or a fraction of an ETH? before sending the whole account? Yeah, of course. So we send the dust, confirm that that got there and said, okay, this is the right address. Check it, double check it again. Um, and then the transaction goes through and then it shows up on their screen, uh, typically an hour later, once it's confirmed on chain. So I, I think this is just a funny little anecdote of how crypto is light years ahead technologically of the rest of the financial services industry. Something that takes Wall Street five days and often weeks occurs in less than an hour in the world of crypto and it makes you wonder why the hell can't the wall street do t plus zero <laughs> you know because it's just you know matt you've been raving you know ranting about that for i don't know how many years yeah i don't know how many years either but it is absurd look chris proved it's possible right why should we be waiting days we're waiting days so banks can profit on the float uh and and other reasons it uh, doesn't so need to be this way yeah, it's it's uh, it's fascinating. And Chris, you answered a question that Nicholas asked whether you can accept something other than Bitcoin. Um, and you said any ERC twenty uh, token, but how many different tokens and coins are available on your platform? So right now, the qualified custodian that we work with supports over sixty assets. Our goal as a best in class SMA platform is to eventually be integrated with every single qualified custodian that we think is a good counterparty. So any asset that any client could want, they can um, move that over or invest in it. Um, and also, you know, by working with multiple counterparties, you can have the best in class liquidity in the market. But right now it's around 60 assets that we support. By the end of this year, we'll have some news um, supporting, you know, closer to 100 assets. And already, I can guess that those 60 probably represent 95% of the total market cap of the entire crypto universe. That's correct, yes. Uh, which means you're, for practical purposes, pretty much any coin a client would want to have is available. <laughs> yes, that's correct. And then sometimes if they have maybe five or 10 grand in a smaller coin that the um, the custodian that we work with does not support, they'll just transfer that and sell it into ETH and then transfer that over. So that's what we typically see as well. Got it. Uh, Matt, you said, you know, something earlier in your introduction of Bitwise. I, I think most folks watching uh, us right now are very familiar with Bitwise. As you noted, you're the oldest and largest uh, crypto fund manager uh, in the business. And uh, Bitwise has a, a huge, long reputation. And you offered, you said, seven, uh, 20 different funds uh, with different strategies available, both passive and active. And you do it in a variety of formats. Uh, you have crypto ETFs, you have uh, over-the-counter um, securities as grantor trusts, you have diversified index funds as well as single fund holdings, et cetera. Why would you, you meaning Bitwise, why would you be motivated or interested in creating SMA funds considering you already have such a large amount of funds out there and a large number of assets under management, et cetera? Why partner with Eaglebrook. Yeah, very, very great, uh, uh, simple answer there. Clients asked us, clients <laughs> asked us for SMAs. And so we're in the business of serving clients and we serve them with SMAs. And then why Eaglebrook? Eaglebrook is the clear leader in this space amongst SMA providers in the crypto market. It is Eaglebrook and then a big step down in our view. Um, and so we were delighted to partner with them to bring you know a couple different strategies to market. But it's really client demand. And that's continued and accelerated since we first uh, launched this effort. Um, it, it's really a fast growing space for our business. Yeah. And, and I would also like to add to that as well. From our clients, we were hearing, hey, we want a asset manager. We want a market cap weighted index. And that's exactly why we decided to partner with Bitwise. So it was basically market demand from our end. So I think that's why this partnership is so strong uh, yeah. in the channel. And, and Chris, how, how many years has Eaglebrook been in business? 
Eaglebrook's been in business for over four years, um, but we actually built this platform for about 18 months with Mariner Wealth Advisors, which is one of the largest uh, independent RAs in the country, working with everything from uh, client onboarding, advisor portal, account management, integrated reporting, reporting, compliance, kind of everything under the sun to um, make it the best in class experience for both the advisor and the end client. And we formally launched this uh, with Mariner in March of 2021. And the reason that I asked Chris to cite that, because, you know, obviously I knew that answer, is because uh, we all get kind of surprised and curious when, you know, here's Eaglebrook, um, only four or five years old, uh, and yet is the oldest in this sleeve of crypto SMAs. And as Matt said, the market leader in this space. And Chris is doing things at Eaglebrook that Jamie Dimon hasn't been able to figure out how to do. Uh, at the largest bank in America. And, and that is what I find so fascinating about this asset class is that it's being invented and creating a reinvention in the financial services industry. And that's a big reason why I think people like Larry Fink are suddenly all over crypto, recognizing they've been asleep at the switch here. Um, and this is a pretty exciting thing. But at the same time, Eagle Brook doesn't have, Chris, the um, household name that... Uh, Morgan Stanley and and JP Morgan and Merrill Lynch have. Uh, so you get a lot of very fundamental questions, and including several that we've gotten here from some of the folks uh, watching this. The biggest one that I've already had three times is regarding custodian. Talk about who's the crypto custodian, who holds the coins and tokens, and talk about the the safety of all of that kind of good stuff. Yeah, great question. So counterparty and the custodian we think is the most important thing. Our qualified custodian that we work with right now is Gemini Trust Company. We went out to every qualified custodian and regularly every quarter go out to every qualified custodian in the space to do diligence and decide what custodian that we would like to add. We are adding another custodian that should be live in uh, Q3 of this year that we'll be announcing. So it'll be the second uh, custodian where the RIA can select, hey, I want to own the uh, Bitwise 10, but I want to own it at this custodian or this custodian. But the answer, uh, the primary custodian we have right now for the 100 million assets in the SMA structure we have is Gemini Trust Company. Um, they are back one-to-one, -one, which is very important in the crypto space when you've been hearing about um, people with gaps in their balance sheet. They're regulated by the New York Department of Financial Services. Um, they have the same uh, trust company structure as a lot of the traditional custodians and SOC 1, SOC 2 audited by Deloitte. So we constantly do diligence, bankruptcy remote. Um, we think it's very important, um, but we like to offload all the diligence on the custodian from the RIA to us. And then we can provide you with the things that are important because Eagle Brook is an SC registered investment advisor as well, following the uh, SEC custody rule and all the other regulatory requirements that, that we need to as an RIA. You know, financial advisors are uh, famous for having, you know, it, it's almost a cliche or, or a slogan or tagline that financial advisors use because advisors, especially when you go to conferences and they're all chatting with each other, that's why they go for the networking and, and interaction. What are you doing? How are you doing it? Who are you doing it with? Those kinds of things. What products are you using? What vendors, what services, et cetera. And there's kind of a tagline or, or, or a cliche that, that advisors use. And it goes like this. You go first. Uh, advisors don't want to be the first to try out a new company or a new fund or a new venture or a new strategy uh, because that's how people get burned. So you go first. Let me know if the water's fine to jump in. Uh, at this point, how many firms are on the Eagle, Book, Eagle Brook platform? Yes, yeah, so we work with over 60 RIAs, and that's anywhere from you know, your $50 million RIA all the way to Mariner, which is $110 billion. So really, uh, in all the firms in between, it's really important that outside of having the best-in-class technology, integrated reporting, a seamless experience, uh, one of the best asset managers in this space on our platform, the trust and experience that we built in this market allows us to answer any question from an RIA, we've basically seen a lot uh, from the 650 advisors that are using our platform. We've traded over $500 million on our platform. So we've really seen it all. Um, and that experience in this market um, is, is how we're an industry leader and how the, the incremental RIA that decides to onboard to our platform, do the diligence and invest into one of the Bitwise crypto SMAs 
it's a very seamless process. It takes one to two weeks um, versus when we first started out, it was taking three to six months for that diligence process. Because like you said, hey, this isn't proven yet. They don't have the assets. They don't have the experience. Well, we've been live for you know almost two and a half years at this point, actively working with RIAs. And that's the only um, channel that we really work with that makes the firms feel comfortable with approving. Talk about, um, talk about the experience you had uh, going through COVID, for example, uh, and also going through the 2022 uh, crypto winter. Talk about the experience within Eagle Brook and, and what that was like and, and so on. So uh, during COVID, as we were building this platform with Mariner, I think that's our, our major edge in this market because the deep domain knowledge and the help from, a, from an RIA actually building this from day one was extremely important when you know, qualified custody in the crypto space kind of started in 2018, 2019. And they were really thinking about it as, you know, hey, we want to build this for a crypto hedge fund or for a large family office. They weren't thinking about it from a scalable SMA platform that can allow hundreds of thousands of clients be managed in a model portfolio run by an asset manager. So that I think um, is a big edge that we found in the market. So that took us a long period of time. And then um, 2022 with all of the, uh, I think it went from 2021 and 2022, it was a lot of flows from the RA market and a lot of education and just kind of getting them onboarded to the platform, making it as seamless as possible. And then 2022 post Luna, post FTX, the, the major question was, hey, how do, how do I feel comfortable with the counterparty risk? How does this all work? So, you know, what are the regulatory guidelines? So I think as we get further away from a lot of the issues we had in 2022, which I think is a general positive, kind of clearing out the bad actors in this space, people will understand, hey, there are great actors in the space. There's great counterparties in this space and all the regulatory and counterparty um but FUD and issues, I think by the day um, is, is diminished. So Matt, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that from what you're seeing, but that's that's what we're seeing in the market. Yeah, Matt, you've been around well before the COVID pandemic struck us. Um, what was life like at Bitwise? Yeah, I think, I think what Chris said is exactly right. It was a great test case for providers that were around, how they navigated that space. Chris navigated it well on the custody side. You know, we're pretty proud at Bitwise. Uh, also navigated well on the on the custody side with no issues. But even in terms of how we were running these strategies, you know, our largest strategy is the Bitwise 10. By the very name of it, it's 10 largest assets. But we never added Luna to that list, even though it got to be the fourth largest asset because we screened it out with the risk screens that we had in there. We had no exposure to FTT, uh, FTX's token. Uh, we had no exposure to a number of other tokens that blew up. So I think- Of course you don't own- um the famous coin that Elon Musk loves to tweet about all the time. <laughs> going on Dogecoin. There's no Doge, there's no Shibu, there's no Binance coin. It's important in this space, not just to have, uh, have rules, but to have those rules tested in the market. And one of the great things about being around for four years is you've, you've lived through forks, you've lived through blowups, and you can look back to see how you navigated those issues, right? Were you using a custodian that proved to be trustworthy or that didn't? Um, and so I think those track records matter. I know you mentioned four years seems like very few. It's a lifetime in crypto. And so there are a lot of test cases that you can look back and evaluate people on. For yeah, that. considering the uh, dynamic evolution of crypto and the amazing volatility that it experiences, I think we do have to talk about crypto years like we talk about dog years um, because it is... Uh, um, <laughs> expansive in, in a, an amazing way. Exactly um, right. Talk a little bit, Matt, we're getting a, a couple of questions from some folks about the specific funds that you have as SMAs at, uh, at Eagle Brook. And again, that is in your chat. The, the first link in the chat will give you description of some of these. But Matt, walk us through some of those. Yeah, I'll probably walk through uh, uh, two of my favorites, Rick, and then can go anywhere else. You know, our flagship product is the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, which, as we mentioned, is the largest, most established crypto index fund in the world. It holds the 10 largest assets weighted by market cap, but screened by screened for risks, right? So we have a about a seven step screening process to remove assets with custody risk, liquidity risk, legal risk, token economic risk, technical risk, et cetera. We have a whole research team that screens those out. 
And then we rebalance it every month to add in assets that are rising or remove assets that are falling. The beautiful thing for an advisor, you know, advisors are making a one, two, 5% allocation to crypto is they know that the index is continually updated and will always hold the most important and leading assets in the space. So you won't be stuck making a bet on Betamax or making a bet on research in motion. The index will evolve over time. It's also not capped so that it can provide, it can flex with the market. Bitcoin is very much in style right now and the index can own as much Bitcoin as it wants. So I think the Bitwise 10 is sort of the S&P 500 of crypto and we're finding a lot of traction with advisors. The other strategy we we're really excited to introduce on Eagle Brook, which is actually the only place that it's available, is our crypto category leaders strategy, which holds uh, seven assets, Bitcoin and ETH weighted at 35%, and then other assets like, like Chainlink uh, or Uniswap that are leaders in the field. And the idea behind that is that different crypto assets, as all of us know, have different use cases. But crypto is a networked economy. And so in most of those use cases, the largest asset steals almost the entirety of the market. Bitcoin owns almost the entirety of the monetary asset market. Ethereum owns over 90% of the layer one asset. Uniswap is dominant in DEX trading. Uh, Lido is dominant in staking. And so this crypto category leader strategy uh, only owns the leading asset in each of the seven categories that we see in the market. And it's actively monitored by the team at Bitwise, led by me, um, to make sure it stays up to date. It's sort of a best ideas portfolio. So whether you want beta or something that's closer to, 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 to alpha, uh, we're, we're providing strategies you know, with, with dynamic risk management underneath them uh, through Eagle Brook to advisors. And is that leaders fund uh, equal weighted or cap weighted? It's a tiered equal weighted system. So Bitcoin and ETH are capped at 35%. And then there's a 10% allocation to oracles and below that 5% allocations to applications like trading or lending or staking, et cetera. And that so reflects their true. dominance and activity in the overall crypto uh, sphere. So that makes sense. That, exactly. Um, the uh, And as I mentioned, in your uh, chat box is a link that will give you not only the... Uh, folks who are on the expert team of Bitwise who serve as the wholesalers around the country, but also those documents that will give you the basic info on these funds that are uh, in the Bitwise SMAs available through Eagle Brook. So be sure to click that link. Um, Chris, um, we're getting a bunch of questions from folks who are asking, I, I think, the, the perfect logistic questions. Um, number one, uh, how does an advisor get their RAA onto the Eagle Book uh, platform? Yes, so it's a fairly straightforward process. It takes one to two weeks. It can take one week if the RAA is motivated and wants to move quickly. We provide them all the diligence documentation, both on Eagle Brook as an SMA platform and Gemini Trust Company as the qualified custodian. So we advise them to review that. Um, then they typically have some compliance questions that they'll send back. Um, sometimes they'll update their ADV to accommodate, hey, we are adding Gemini Trust Company as a custodian um, where our client's assets were, will be held. And then from there, they sign the agreement. We set up a launch call that really trains the advisors and the operational staff at that RA on how to use the platform effectively. And then from there, they all get sent secure logins where then they can use the platform and onboard any type of registered account. That's individual, joint, trust, LLC, C-Corp, nonprofit, IRAs, which are very popular, um, especially, you know, at these prices and in this market. So it takes minutes to onboard those. And from there, we'll have one-on-ones with advisors if they have, you know, deeper questions uh, that their clients are asking or about the platform. And then also um, we can set up, um, you know, research or investment education calls, which I know uh, Matt also spends a ton of time. So I'm sure as we continue to go to market, we'll be partnering more on the, the research and investment um, webinars and launch calls. And does uh, Ziegelbrook charge platform fees or investment management fees? So we charge a platform fee. This is actually included in the fee that you'll be investing in the Bitwise Crypto SMAs. So you'll be quoted one fee and that includes the Eagle Brook fee um, in there. Got it. And any plans uh, with wirehouses? 
that's uh that's the end goal. We want to be we want to really win the RA market, which is where we're focused right now when we're in clear lead. But ultimately, we do want to move to the wirehouses as quickly as possible. I think that they like SMAs and and direct ownership um, in other asset classes. So I think they will uh, choose crypto SMAs um, fairly quickly once you know demand uh, from the RAs and, or from the advisors on in their channels comes back quickly. Uh, my dad is an advisor to Wirehouse, so part of the reason that I built Eagle Brook was to ultimately get to the Wirehouse channel. So we'll see how quickly that happens. Awesome. Mary Beth, we're getting a couple of comments from folks saying that they can't access the link in the uh, chat box. Can you put it into the Q&A box instead? So Mary Beth will do that in just a moment for everybody to be able to see. So you have access to the link. Uh, you can also go to our core website, dacfp.com, and you'll be able to access the link there as well. But we'll put it into the Q&A section to make it easier. Um, I, I want to do something um, that we've not done um, before um, because, you know, Matt, you and, and Chris are both kind of up in the 20,000 foot level um, dealing with the, the creation strategy management operation of the firm. Um, I, I'd really, I, I think Steve, um, Steve Degnan is, is with us here today. Um, Stephen is, um, head of key accounts for Bitwise. Um, Stephen, if you're here, um, I want to see if we can't, Mary Beth, if you can facilitate this, bring Stephen on this webinar because uh, I would love to chat with Stephen for a couple of minutes. So if you can get him on. Um, the reason I'm asking to bring Stephen on is that he works every day in the trenches with REAs and multifamily offices and such. And um, uh, so we'll see if we can get Steve on the call. Um, there he is, uh, Stephen. Um, unmute and bring up your video. I oh, see your hand. Ah, there we are. Now unmute yourself and we got a party. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, I'm glad Sorry, that you're I'm glad delay. that you're available. Thanks for jumping on the call real fast. Uh, as I mentioned, Steve is um, key accounts director dealing with large uh, REAs and, and multifamily offices. Steve and I do a lot of events around the country together on behalf of Bitwise. Uh, the reason I asked to, for you to, to jump on real fast, Steve, is that you, you're in the trenches, uh, unlike me and, and Chris and, and Matt. You talk with advisors on a daily basis. What are you hearing uh, from advisors about crypto SMAs? Yeah, no, it, it's it's a great question. And I'm going to actually twist it a little bit, Rick, if you don't mind, sure. um, you know, in, in reference to Eagle Brook, since Eagle Brook's on the call as well, and Chris. Um, I would say, you know, just in terms of the partnership, many firms that I speak with really kind of are very familiar with Eagle Brook, recognize them as, as a best in class SMA, uh, you know, crypto platform provider. And from our standpoint, they recognize us as one of the fastest growing crypto asset managers in the marketplace. And really us, us acting as a specialty crypto manager, offering kind of the uh, diversified approaches in the digital asset management space. They kind of recognize that and they recognize it as, as a great partnership. So it's a little slightly different way to kind of answer your question. Um, and then I would go on to say, like, from an SMA perspective, I would say that um, clients that I speak with do recognize this as an opportunity for them as advisors to provide crypto exposure for their clients in a way that, that clients can't really access that on their own. And I think that's really important for folks to understand the exclusivity in the sense of the partnership with Eagle Brook and their platform to offer it, as well as um, us as a, as a manager that, that solely focuses on crypto asset management uh, under Matt's leadership. And so, in fact, Chris, to that point, uh, does Eagle Brook work exclusively with advisors or can individual investors open an account directly at Eagle Brook? Exclusively through advisors. So I, I think to Stephen's point, we're only way that you can access this is one through an advisor that has Eagle Brook uh, that has approved Eagle Brook uh, as a as a platform to allocate to crypto SMAs. But if you want a direct managed solution in the crypto space, you can't go on a self directed retail platform and access that. And I think that's what's very powerful in this market. 
Yeah, I think you're right, because in, in the end, when the, that Bitcoin ETF does come to market, whether it's now or 10 years from now, that's going to be a competitive threat to advisors because, you know, it's like an S&P 500 index fund. Anybody can buy one anywhere with, it, with or without an advisor. But a crypto SMA, only available from an advisor. Uh, and that is another market differentiator, especially since SMAs offer advantages that ETFs don't. So I think that's a really important point that you are really serving the advisory community in a very special way. And I think that's very valuable for advisors and their practice management. Uh, Steve, um, I want to flip the conversation upside down from where uh, Chris and Matt have been talking about it because they're, they're, as is their job, they're making crypto SMA sound like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, let, me, let me turn it upside down for you. What's the hardest part? for advisors when it comes to using uh, an SMA? Yeah, no, that's, a, that's actually a really good question. So I think there's a perception out there in the marketplace that from a documentation standpoint, Rick, that there's a lot of documentation and, and it's just cumbersome process. And, you know, really, you know, and listening to Chris speak on the call, it, it's very much streamlined and, you know, yeah, there's a DocuSign process. So I think that's the perception that, that clients have that's really not true. It's, it's, it's relatively seamless. You know, Chris had mentioned kind of their launch process. So we, we as a partner, partnering with Eagle Brook, that four-step process in terms of onboarding a client and getting all the documentation taken care of, um, and then having a, um, an R, you know, like a, a testing the data feeds, I think that kind of elite, you know, once clients understand kind of the ease of use and the simplicity of launching SMAs on their platform, that overcomes a lot of the obstacles. And uh, I know, Chris, you had addressed earlier the, the notion uh, of paperwork and, and the, uh, the administrative process of the logistics of moving uh, onto the platform. But uh, there's a related question that, that someone has asked, which is, how do you get the RAA or the broker dealer um, to want to do this? Um, it's one thing to logistically execute, but how do you, you know, we've got advisors who want to do it. How do they persuade their firms to even have a conversation with you? Yeah. So I, I think this is from working with uh, a lot of RIAs, learning and answering their questions and making them feel comfortable with the platform, I think is it's it really comes down to trust. Hey, do they trust us as a platform? Do they understand our experience? And what that comes down to is really when they're doing the diligence and asking the hard questions, we're very transparent and honest with them and very thorough and, and answer any question they have to get their COO, chief compliance officer, uh, or chairman to approve the platform. And that's what we're really good at. So we really focus on once the RIA has advisors that say, hey, we want to allocate to the Bitwise crypto SMAs, Eagle Brook really focuses on walking the RIA through all the steps to feel comfortable with signing the agreement, making sure all the uh, T's are crossed for compliance um, to, to get that over the edge. And then it's fairly seamless, seamless once the advisor gets the uh, login to the advisor portal to onboard a trust account and invest, let's say, 100K into the Bitwise tents. So, Steve, when you're you know, in the trenches talking with advisors about all this, are you, to what degree are you finding yourself promoting Eagle Brook? Because you, if you're talking about your SMA fund, it's hard to talk about that without also simultaneously mentioning Eagle Brook, which is where the SMA fund lives. So talk about that relationship and the interaction. Well, you know, I, I talk about it as a partnership. I mean, frankly, I talk to... Uh, my counterpart at, at Eagle Brook on a, on a regular basis, and I've, I've reached out to him twice today, as a matter of fact. So, you know, we're, we're the third, third party manager, we're managing the assets and, and Eagle Brook is kind of handling, you know, the platform, the administration and all that type of stuff. So it truly is, is a, is a partnership. So that's how I speak to clients uh, about it. And if there's something I don't know, um, in terms of my interaction, I reach out to, again, Eagle Brook, uh, and potentially bring them on a call with a client uh, and do joint calls together as well. Um, we have a question here from Charles uh, for you, Matt. Uh, um, talk about the Bitwise Futures ETF. Oh, sure. Yeah, we're really excited to bring BITC to market. Um, you know, Bitcoin futures are a way you can provide exposure to Bitcoin in an ETF wrapper. But we looked at the first generation of products that launched 
and we thought we could do it a little bit better. So the difference between BITC and competing products is BITC uses what's called an optimized role strategy. In other words, if you have a strip of futures available every month, instead of just picking the next available futures contract, we'll look at all the available choices and pick the one that offers the best pricing based on current conditions. So it just adds a little bit of intelligence. If you're familiar with the ETF space, uh, then you know that in almost every commodity, there are these two versions. There's the front month contract like USO, the oil ETF, and then an optimized strategy like DBO, which is an optimized strategy. And typically short-term traders buy the front month and long-term investors buy the optimized strategy because it offers better long-term returns historically. And so we just replicated that into the Bitcoin space. And uh, the returns to date have been have been fantastic. We're very excited about it. We think it's the best Bitcoin futures ETF for long-term investors that's available on the market. Do you find that um, people buying this is their only uh, avenue to crypto or is this part of a broader crypto play? Yeah, I think we see we see both things. I mean, you know, Steve and I were in an advisor's office yesterday talking about this fund. Uh, they saw it as a potential replacement for other funds. I think other advisors want exposure to Bitcoin through an ETF and maybe crypto equities through an ETF, or maybe they want exposure to Bitcoin and ETF wrapper and then altcoins and another structure. Advisors use different approaches. Um, what we're trying to do at Bitwise is in each approach we take, make sure it's best in class, right? So an optimized future strategy, a partnership with Eagle Brook on SMAs, index funds uh, that are done the right way. So we're seeing all approaches from the advisor market. I'm running through the questions from the audience as best I can. Chris, this is for you. Uh, are there any registration or account types that uh, Eagle Brook does not support? Uh, UTMAs is the only one. So other than that, joint account, trust account, IRA, Roth IRA, uh, all the usual stuff that people would ordinarily want to use. Yes, any type of registered account. The only difference with the IRAs is you do have to open up a self-directed IRA. So if you have an IRA at a traditional brokerage or custodian, you can't just invest in the Bitwise 10 with that. Uh, you would go through our platform to seamlessly on onboard um, the IRA, do a transfer of assets, and then they'll be invested uh, through any of those types of IRAs. Got it. Uh, and David is asking, how does the SMA handle staking? Yes, so great question. So this is on the custodial side. We plan to add another custodian um, in Q3 that will have um, the ability to do staking. However, that is, again, a compliance question um, that we're still evaluating. So uh, we don't really have an answer right now on if staking will be available in the SMA structure. It's dependent on compliance and uh, what the custodian offers. Yeah, it would seem to me a rather complex issue because you've got three due diligence teams, yours, the custodians, and the uh, the firms, and the odds of the three syncing up perfectly. Uh, <laughs> I think you're going to deal with a um, a case by case customization in any event. I, would, I don't see a one size fits all of that. And three outside councils that might have different opinions as well. So um, we we want to offer it because we think uh, that can be really valuable with with the yields and staking the different assets. Um, so we'll, we'll keep our, uh, everyone in the market updated on that. Uh, and Steve, this is for you from Lawrence. Uh, he asks, is it accurate to say that Bitwise offers crypto index funds for an advisor who manages their own portfolios and Eagle Brook is a better fit for advisors who outsource their money management? Oh, that's a, that's actually a good question. Um, Me, I'm wondering if it's not the other way around. Well, I mean, it's kind of an ideal fit question. Like that's the way I would look at it. Like for for crypto and generally speaking, um, for clients that are kind of crypto savvy that have been investing in crypto for the past two to four years. To me, I think that the SMAs are a great option because we know right through the surveys the surveys that we've done that there's a there over sixty percent of of clients hold crypto assets away from the advisory relationship. So the ability, and we've heard everybody talk about, talk about it today in terms of the ability to transfer assets in kind um, into an SMA. To me, SMAs are a good vehicle for clients that have experience in the crypto markets. From an ETF perspective, the way I think of ETFs and kind of the ideal client for an e a crypto-based ETF 
is a client that has less experience in the crypto space and an advisor that wants to scale access to, to crypto, generally speaking, across his you know, full portfolio or his growth model um, you know, something like that. That's the, the way I kind of interpret that question. Yeah, I think I agree with you that if you um, want to manage the own fund, pick your own coins, do your own tax loss harvesting or your own rebalancing, you'd want to use the SMA. But if you want to offload all of that, you would use the ETF uh, or the funds, other funds, the grant or trust, et cetera, that Bitwise offers. So bottom line is, however you like to manage money, Bitwise offers a product to accommodate your desires. That's kind exactly. of that's kind of the short answer. Uh, and our last question here that we have time for um, before I jump into, um, I want to ask everybody for help on a survey. I'm going to give you some details on that in just one minute. But before we do that, Chris, does Eaglebrook provide tax reporting or is that all done by the custodian? Yes. So we actually do the tax reporting, not the custodian. Uh, we fill out uh, an automate form IRS 8949 for every client. Um, this is a, a actually a fairly complex process um, given the amount of tax loss harvesting that we do, but we make it as um, straightforward and automated as possible for all the end clients. Well, this has been a really fabulous conversation and I'm really glad um, that we've been able to delve into this. Uh, crypto S SMAs are not as household uh, in their knowledge and understanding among advisors and certainly crypto SMEs even less so. So I really want to thank Chris King, the founder and CEO of Eaglebrook Advisors and Matt Hogan, the CIO of Bitwise Asset Management and Steve Degnan for the uh, for the drop in here. That was really helpful uh, information that you gave us. And I'm really glad uh, that you were able to join us. Thank you uh, all for doing that. Um, I also want to um, uh, ask for everybody's uh, favor, if we could. Um, we are doing a survey here at DACFP uh, with uh, McKinsey um, on crypto investment products, which is exactly what we've been talking about here today. Uh, and so we, I'd like to ask you to participate in this survey. Uh, Mary Beth will put the link into the Q&A box and the, in the chat box. Uh, it'll take you 15 minutes or so to go through this. You'll have a chance to win an Amazon gift card, but most importantly, you'll be providing McKinsey with incredibly important feedback uh, as we uh, help them figure out what kind of crypto investment products you like. And yes, as you would expect, there are questions in there on crypto SMAs. Uh, so I was uh, heavily involved in the writing uh, of this survey, and I'm really looking forward to the results. So if you can take a few minutes and participate in that, you'll find the link uh, in uh, the Q&A and in the chat box uh, mm -hmm. as well. And as Matt said, everybody at Bitwise goes through our certificate program in blockchain and digital assets. I invite you to do the same so that you can brag to your clients that you have obtained this knowledge, separating yourself, differentiating yourself from other advisors. And most importantly, it'll give you the knowledge you need to be able to serve your clients effectively. We have a special course a track specifically for financial advisors. We have another one for home office personnel uh, and you'll get up to 18 CE credits. Uh, so I encourage you to go to DACFP.com to learn about that. And of course, read my number one Amazon bestseller, The Truth About Crypto and listen to my podcast every day. Today, as I mentioned, I have a special 40 minute podcast on what's going on in the world of crypto right now. Um, and you can reach me in all kinds of, of ways. So I want to say thanks so much, Matt Hogan, Chris King, Stephen Degnan. Thanks for joining me on the program here today. And we will look forward to talking with you again very soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, Greg. Thanks. Thanks, Rick.